creativity is tapping into a hidden source. That's what fascinates me, to be in touch with the unconscious or the subconscious pool of creativity. Can I dip into that well and lift a bucket full of it? I'm a storyteller. All of us screenwriters, that's all we are. We're nothing fancy. We can't earn a living any other way except lying and telling stories. I'm a avid fly fisherman, obsessive fly fisherman. Mainly what I love is cracking the code, fooling nature. You go out there, you know that if you use the same bugs you used the last time that worked, it's probably not gonna work again. It's a different day. So you have to use your powers of observation. And there is an analogy. You cast an artificial piece of fluff out onto the surface of the water, and you hope that this lures something unknown, mystical and magical, up from the depths to take your fly. It's the same thing with writing, at least for me. I'm trying to cast something out onto the surface, and hopefully something magical and unknown is gonna come up from the depths of my subconscious, and I'll grab it, I'll land it, and I can use it. If you look at my work, there is a theme that runs through about people who refuse to accept their preordained destiny. I was a stutterer. I was a heavy little boy. I've changed a lot about myself. Is there something within my past or my psyche that tells me, yes, I can understand this story. I can understand these characters. My process is probably a little different than some writers, I do an awful lot of prep. I will do three by five cards, thoughts about scenes, a line of dialogue, research points. And I always have to warn my producers, this is when I take the time. Be patient, this could take months. Yeah, these uh, cards have now been amalgamated into a treatment. As you can see, it's very detailed, including uh, uh, sections of dialogue. Basically, somebody could read this treatment and know exactly the movie they're gonna get. Then it's a very easy step to turn that into a script. Here it is in script form. I try to be at my desk working by 9.30. If you're having a day where it just won't get started, it's very uncomfortable. I force myself to sit there. And usually, out of desperation, out of boredom, I'll write a sentence, and that's not a good sentence. So I'll rewrite it, but that's got me going. And the act of rewriting then will carry me through into the day's work. Often good to do a, a fishing trip between the first draft and the second draft, because that's where you find the howlers. That's where you see the weaknesses. That's when you know act two just is not working. That she is not funny enough. That they aren't in love beautifully. And that you've written some really lousy pieces of dialogue. You need the distance to see it. My task as a writer, almost my duty as a writer, is as much as humanly possible to go into the heads of my characters. I've got to be able to tell myself in one, or at the most, two sentences. What is this movie about? Why do I want to write it? Because that thin red line has to run right through the script. And you can have wonderful scenes, but if they don't help the thin red line, you got to get rid of them. Nice little trout to make my day. I broke the skunk and it feels kind of good and I guess I was right. They had never seen a purple haze before. The act of fishing helps me in that distillation. It's that strange, almost mystical link between physical activity and brain activity. Getting back 
into contact with nature. When you stop at the stream side and watch the water go by, and you get a little, a little sleepy, <laughs> kind of doze off on the riverbank, and you get the most, I get the most amazing thoughts. That's the trophy, fish, is maybe what I've come home with. Ah, now I know how to do that scene, or now I know what that character wants out of life.